for they would have to defend their state from invasion and destruction. The world's first democracy would now be tested in the crucible of war and conflict. BC, 18 years after the founding of democracy. A lone figure runs across the mountainous terrain of Greece. His name is Pheidippides, and he is a citizen of Athens. On this day, Pheidippides will make one of the most astonishing athletic achievements in history. the inspiration for our modern marathon. But Pheidippides' quest is not for glory, but survival. His homeland is about to be conquered by the mighty Persian Empire. In the early 5th century BC, the Persians were the greatest power on the world stage. Their vast empire stretched from India in the east to Turkey in the west. Now, out on their western frontier, the tiny state of democratic Athens was gaining power. This was a threat that the Persians would have to destroy. The Persians lived in a culture of unbending tyranny. At the head of their empire sat Darius, known to the Greeks only as the Great King. Suppliants had to cover their mouths in his presence just to avoid tainting the air he breathed. For Pheidippides and the democratic Athenians, Conquest by Darius and the Persians would mean the destruction of their entire way of life. There is a huge cultural difference between the Greeks and the Persians. The Greeks are a people who emphasize freedom. The Persians would put far more emphasis on obedience. It's a struggle between freedom and slavery. The Persian force landed at a sandy bay called Marathon, just 26 miles from Athens. News of the invasion spread through the streets like wildfire. This was a city without a standing army. Every male citizen would have to come to the defense of his state. The poorer citizens have spears, sticks, bows and arrows whatever weapons they can find. But the heart of the Athenian force would be the hoplites, men who could afford heavy bronze armor, a shield, a spear, a sword. The Athenians would field a small but determined force. That's probably the first time in the history of the Athenian state that the entire population had been mustered. And for them to feel 10,000 hoplites out of a citizenry that might have only been 20 or 30,000. It's a level of involvement that's astounding. But as they faced the Persians on the battlefield, the Athenians held out little hope of victory. They were outnumbered by two to one. Pheidippides' desperate mission was to run for help from one of Athens' local rivals, the Greek state of Sparta. Even as he ran, Pheidippides must have imagined the horror that his fellow Athenians now faced.
you're dodging spears from your men in front and your men in behind, but you probably couldn't see or hear. All you would feel would be pressure. You wouldn't see the sword plunge that took one of your testicles off. You would not see the spear thrust that took your head off. You would have no idea what was going on, just the momentum that carried you ahead. All you would be aware of is that you had to push forward and keep stabbing and keep on your feet, and you would hope that everybody else would do that. Pheidippides' run was to become the stuff of legend. Fired by the terror that his fellow citizens were being slaughtered, he ran 140 miles in just two days. But Pheidippides' quest would end in failure. Help would be refused. He was left only with the knowledge that his fellow Athenians would have to fight alone. Pheidippides could never have imagined that the Greeks would in fact win a glorious victory. The Athenians had rushed at their foe in a headlong charge. And the Persians had scattered in the face of their assault. The Athenians slaughtered over 6,000 Persians in one fateful day. The world's first democracy had survived its first great test. Every Athenian knew that he had voted to fight and that this reflected the majority vote of the citizens, and that was not true of the Persians. Whatever you want to say about democracy, it fields the most patriotic, enthusiastic, and often large armies. The Athenians returned to their city to celebrate their victory. But amongst them was one for whom the war with Persia had only just begun. An Athenian general named Themistocles. Themistocles had fought on the battlefield at Marathon. He was typical of a new generation of Athenian leaders, a man who had risen to power through democracy. Themistocles is a fascinating character, very much an example of the effect of democracy uh, in Athens. It's relatively clear that he doesn't come from the inner circle of the landed aristocracy that traditionally had ruled in Athens. There were stories told about his feeling rather touchy about the fact that he hadn't had a traditional aristocratic upbringing, for example, in music and uh, poetry. In fact, that might have given him a spur to, to show that he could do as well as someone who had gone to all the right schools, as it were. Themistocles' opinion of his common origins was blunt and straightforward. I may not know how to play the lyre or flute, but I do know how to make a city great. Themistocles had learned the skills of leadership here, the Democratic Assembly of Athens. From this very podium, Themistocles would now show himself to be one of history's greatest leaders. 
the savior of his city. For Themistocles alone recognized that the Persians might still be a danger, and that next time, victory for the Athenians might not prove so easy.